Hey guys, welcome to episode three for Medic Junkies. Today we're gonna to talk about giving large volume boluses. We're gonna use the pressure bag and we're gonna use the push-pull method for this. Of course, this is all coming from our new protocols, the Central Arizona Regional EMS Guidelines. This particular one is shocked that I have pulled up. But we've noticed as we reviewed all these protocols that a lot of them are asking for more volume than what we've given in the past. We usually give 10 to 20 cc's per kilo, but now some of them are saying to give up to 30 cc's per kilo. For this particular protocol for shock, 30 per kilo, up to a max of one liter at a time, and we can repeat that to a total of three boluses. Now, volume takes a while to get in. So if you have that patient who's hypotensive and they need volume, we're gonna have to get it in quick. So my most favorite technique is to use the pressure infuser bag. As you can see here, we have the pressure infuser and we've got a couple different syringes that we can utilize with the stopcock. You don't need the stopcock. Um, there's another way you can go just directly in the line. So looking here, we have our IV established already. We want to give a rapid fluid bolus. So we're going to go ahead and put our pressure infuser on it. What we're going to do is I like to stick my hand through the top of your sleeve, grab your IV bag, and now we're just going to put the sleeve right over the top. Now it comes with this little string, some of them might have a hook. Put that through your IV bag, and now this is going to hold your IV securely in place. Okay. Now from here, make sure that the stopcock within your uh, pressure bag is closed off, and we're going to go ahead and start pumping up. Okay. Now when you pump this pressure bag, usually for the IOs, we pump this up until we barely touch the red, okay? Um, however, we don't really need to go that high when we're doing this on an IV, especially if you have maybe an older patient with those spider veins, a smaller IV. We don't want to blow our IV. Um, the whole goal of this is just to pump it up enough to where we see a nice solid drip within our chamber, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and open up my line. Continue to pump it up, and you can already start to see a pretty steady drip. A few more pumps, and I should have a nice solid stream coming out of here. Okay, so there's a lot of volume coming out of there right now. I'm going to go ahead and pinch this off real quick. Now remember, as we give fluid, we're going to lose pressure within the system. So periodically during our transport, we're going to have to come back and apply a little bit more pressure. Okay, so keep an eye on that drip chamber. Again, we're going for the steady flow of fluid. Now my next technique, we're going to look at the push-pull technique here. Okay, so we have our line established right now. The easiest, best way to do this is to grab your syringe and if we're going for fluid, you probably want to grab a larger syringe. So right here I have a 60cc, okay? I'm going to go ahead and screw this in, needleless port. Okay, I'm checking all my kinks. All right, so I open up my line. I'm going to pinch it off to the patient. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw fluid from my bag, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and pinch to my bag, and then I can go ahead and push to my patient. And I can just continue to do this. Obviously, I'd be given the full syringe. So pinch to the patient, pull from my bag, pinch to the bag, and push to my patient. Pretty easy technique right there. I'm going to go ahead and close that off. Now something else that we could do is utilize a stopcock. If we know we're starting an IV at the very beginning for fluid resuscitation, I would recommend putting this thing in line in your tubing. Now I would recommend you set this up before you attach your IV to the patient's IV catheter. We don't want to introduce any air into this line if we can at all help it. So um, even if you're going to attach this onto a pigtail or maybe somewhere within this line we can go ahead and break this off. So I'm going to stop my fluid, I'm going to disconnect. Now again keep in mind I would have gloves on, we're going to be as sterile as possible. We're going to have to remove these caps from my stopcock. Go ahead and put this in. Now, for this particular one, we don't have a swivel to lock this in, okay? So we're just going to have to push real firm and twist so it stays in place. Your agency may have a double lock on there. That would be awesome. 
Um, we don't want to have a disconnect, obviously. All right, so you can see right now I'm off to the air port. So now everything is in line with my tubing. Now I can come up and grab my syringe. I'm going to screw into the open port. Now if I want to give fluid, I simply turn this. This longer portion here, it says off on it. So you're going to turn that off to my bag. I can go ahead and open up my line. And now I'm going to push to my patient. Okay, if I need to draw more, I would turn that off to my patient. Draw from my IV. Okay, and then I can turn off to my IV and push to my patient. If you're wondering, this is pushing through an tw open 20 gauge IV catheter. So you can push quite a bit of volume pretty quickly. It's a little hard pushing through this syringe. But a lot of volume to go through there. So hope you enjoy. Have fun.